You know, I've been, and many of us have been in church a long time. Saved for a long time. But the Lord has me in my personal ministry in areas where I deal with a lot of individuals who are unchurched. Meaning that they just don't know God, they don't understand this church quote unquote thing. And I'm talking about from the organization as well as the organism. We come in here assuming that the person next to us who's been sitting in the pews next to us for many years, we just assume that they know everything that they need to know about Christianity 101. But it dawned on me years ago at the previous ministry I came from that there was individuals that you sit down and you talk to them, you understand that there's just a lot they're ignorant about when it comes to Christianity. So we sat down and we started a teaching on some things simply by what does it mean? What does salvation mean? What does is, what is redemption mean? What does restoration mean? What does sanctification mean? What does justification mean? Because our text says that for we were saved in this hope. So I guess what the question would have to be then, what does it mean when somebody becomes saved? Saved from what? Saved from who? Is it the beginning of something? Or is it the end of something? What does true biblical salvation mean to a Christian? And why is biblical salvation so important? Listen, 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 listen. The Lord, I believe, has put this on my heart and through the testimonies that I've heard today that I know is confirmation that, that he's put me on the right track because, hey, all I want is all to do is for us to walk and live in victory. I, I want us to be able to walk in victory and understand our position in Christ that the devil cannot use his schemes and his tricks to keep us in bondage and take away our freedom of what God has already given us. The, the devil appreciates and loves the fact that so of, of many of us in the church today are uninformed and don't understand the hope that we have. See, Romans chapter 8 starts and ends with a declaration of Christians' absolute security before God. Look at verse 1. Look at verse 1. Keep your Bibles open. It says, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Picking up from the previous verse. But you also see in verse 2, it says, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit mm, of life set me free from the law of sin and death. And chapter 8 ends in the last three verses, letting us know that nothing can separate you from the love of Christ because having believed the gospel having believed that the spirit of God now lives within us that now we have the right to stand before God as our father in complete security and trust that the seal of Jesus is on us that spirit helps us have a blessed assurance and confidence that God loves us and he's always there for us biblical salvation means by which God provides us redemption it's an act of saving or being saved it's a free 
regaining. It's the action of regaining a possession or, or, or an exchange of payments or a clearing of a debt. It's a retrieval. It's a recovery. It's a reclamation. It's a repositioning. It's a return. It's a recoupment. It's a rescuing and a deliverance from sin through repentance. I know I'm, I know I'm moving slow. I know I'm moving slow. But it's by our faith and our hope in Jesus Christ that biblical salvation is an act of God's love and his grace through Jesus to provide all of us eternal life through a relationship with Jesus. Why, 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 Brother Dre, then why is that so important? Why is that so important? It's important because you need to understand this, that man cannot save himself. I don't care how good you think you are, how morally good you think you are. I don't steal, I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't do that. I don't care how cute you think you are or how handsome you think you are or what degrees you have on your wall. It doesn't matter as you charismatic or are you highly intelligent. Man cannot save himself. Daniel couldn't do it. Moses couldn't do it. Abraham couldn't do it. Daniel, Elijah, your mama and your daddy can't do it. We cannot save ourselves. Psalms 49 and 7 says this, no one can redeem the life of another or give to God a ransom for them. But John 14 and 6 says this, that is only through Jesus, because he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, and no one comes to the Father but through him. So it's in that hope that we were saved. That hope gives us the blueprint for our lives. 66 love letters of guidance and instructions and that we can have a hope and a confidence in the things not yet seen. Right, right. And it's this hope that we use as an anchor for our lives. We use it for an anchor for our peace, for our sanity, for the foundation and the security of our souls. That hope that saved us from condemnation. Look at verse 1 once again. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Condemnation, what is that? Because condemnation is a, is a courtroom type language. To have no condemnation declared means to be found innocent of all accusations. To have no sentence inflicted and no guilty verdict found. That's, that, that, that's, that's deep right there because by God's grace, believers in Jesus Christ will not face condemnation or God's holy wrath because we have passed from death into life. Somebody, somebody listen to me. The guilt and the shame of your past has no presence in your life right now. You have been saved, set free. You have been getting a, a pardon through Christ because you believe in the hope that is found in him. It's like, you know what a pardon is? A pardon is like whatever the act was, it's like it never happened in the first place. <laughs> the dirt that you've done in your life, the sins that you have done in your life, Jesus has pardoned you. He has let you off the hook. He has given you a new start. He has cleaned you up from the inside out because you put 
your hope in him. Past mistakes and past regrets and past failures and all those acts of sins like abortions and affairs and addictions and lies and thefts and your deceit is like it never happened before. That stuff that other people try to use leverage against you and always try to throw it back in your face. Yeah, that stuff that you used to do. Sometimes people will only see what you used to do and how you, uh, your, your, your sin affected them and they will never let you off the hook. But I'm free in Christ the way I preach and the way I live my life because there's nothing that you can say about me that the cross doesn't already say. I, I know I got dirt in my life. I know I've done some stuff and that stuff doesn't have to affect you when you realize you place your hope in Christ. When you have put your hope in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. I say that as many times as I did to get the emphasis in your hearing and your understanding because some people think it's just good enough to be in church. Many people have been in church many years and have never experienced the forgiveness and the saving power of Jesus Christ. You have to be in Christ. Some of you are trying to be renewed and rebuild and restored because you think, hey, hey, I've been in N.A. And I've been in A.A. And I've been in counseling. And I'm in the world or I'm in the streets or I'm in the clubs and I'm in this group and in that group. But let me tell you something. The prerequisite is you have to be in Christ Jesus. Because this hope, this hope is only found in him and this hope is so great because it saved you from eternity in hell All right. yeah 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 God work 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 this hope that's found in Christ saved you from a burning hell All right. it saved you where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth where there'll be Constant darkness and fire forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. This hope saved you from that. It saved you from total separation from God and a complete absence and influence of a loving God's likeness and kindness. Hell is a place, hell is a place, hell is a place, hell is a place where there will be total consciousness. Yeah, you will understand what you're going through. Eternal separation from God and his blessings for individuals who rejected this hope throughout their lives. And this hope saves you from that. It saves you from the second death. What's the second death, Brother Dre? Well, I always say this, who wants to live once and die twice? What you talking about, Brother Dre? Well, who wants to live one time in this flesh? Die one time in this flesh and then die again for all eternity. Who wants to live once and die twice? You have to understand that the hope that you have in Christ Jesus, the text says this hope that we're talking about in the text this hope releases you from the power of sin. The power of sin, meaning the past, the present, and the future. Because whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Jesus died so sin no longer has to control you. Sin no longer has to have dominion over you. Sin no longer has to rule you. Well, what is sin, Brother Dre? <laughs> well, sin is defined as any action or thought or attitude that falls short of God's word and God's holiness. 
to be free from sin means that those who have made Jesus the Lord over their lives are no longer a slave to sin. We have the power through the Holy Spirit to live a victorious life in Christ Jesus. Just like you used to follow the flesh, used to follow your sinful desires, now that you are in Christ Jesus, you now follow the Holy Spirit in the umpting of Christ. For those who are born again and new creations, you have a new nature inside of you. The things that used to be appealing to you, they don't appeal to you no more. Some of the things and the places that you used to go and how you used to act, you don't go there or act those ways no more because there's a new nature inside of you. And sin no longer has power and authority of and in your life. But I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. See, Brother Dre, you, 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 you ain't real. You ain't real. Because don't Christians sin too? Yes. We live in a fallen world. And yes, there are times we still sin. Yes, we miss the mark. Yes, we fall short. Yes, it happens. But the difference is that living in this fallen world, yeah, we may sin, but we don't make sin a lifestyle choice. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible does not teach sinless perfection. Let me get, the Bible does not teach sinless perfection. But understand this, no true child of God will continually live in habitual sin. 